Today we have another Revit gameplay tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool twisted building in Revit. We're going to be first building the unit, then we're going to be arraying that unit, adjusting the proper height, and then we're going to be adjusting the angles for each of them and then array to once again finally to get the final shape. Let's go! Now quickly, before we jump into Rabbit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Rabbit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Rabbit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Rabbit. And here we are in Revit, as you can see, I have already created some levels just uh, to, to help us out with this project. And the first thing that we're going to be creating is that single module or single unit. So let's get started by going here into the level one floor plan. Here, you're going to notice the circle. I'm just going to be using that later as reference. For now, let's just zoom in here in the center. I'm going to be using the wall tool and let's just pick out a basic generic 200 millimeter wall, create a 4000 millimeter segment, hit the escape key a couple of times, select that, let's then copy that down by uh, 2800 millimeters, just like this, hit the escape key a couple of times again, and then let's go here to the floor tool, and for the floor, let's just use a simple rectangle, and then create a floor, just like this, hit the escape key a couple of times again, and then finish. Now I also want to add a roof, so for that let's go to level 2, and then here I'm just going to go to the roof tool, and then I'm just going to use this roof, again just a rectangle, make sure that the fine slope is unchecked, so this will be a plain uh, roof, a plain flat roof, then I'm just going to attach the walls to this roof, and then let's go to the 3D view just to see what we have, and yeah, it looks perfect. Now I'm just going to go down and open up the south elevation and here in the south elevation you can see that the floor is below level 1 and that the roof is above level 2. Now in most cases this is perfectly fine, in this particular case just because of the type of this building I actually want my roof to be below level 2 and I want my floor to be above level 1. I actually want my whole unit to be in between these level lines. So let's select the floor first and give it a height offset of 150 millimeters and then let's select this roof and give it a height offset of minus 150. So now it's going to look like that. If I open up the east elevation for example, you can notice that here these walls are going through the floor. So let's select those, go to attach top base, check the base and then check this floor, so now those will be attached at that floor. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then let's go back into level 1, let's create a couple of curtain walls. So let's create the first one, just go here to wall, basic wall, and then let's go to curtain wall, and let's create one here, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, now let's open that up in east, yeah. Okay, then let's select it, let's go to attach top base, so for the top attach it here, again attach top base, for the base attach it here, and now it should work, yeah there it is, hit the tab key a few times, and there we go, okay so we have this uh, curtain wall. Now the next step is going to be to add some grids, so let's go to curtain grid and let's create one like this and then one like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, yeah we can make them at 500 on each side just like that, uh, then I want to add a few more, so again curtain grid and then let's add one here and one here, I'm not going to take care of the height that much, uh, then let's go here to add remove segments and add a segment here, and then again add remove segments and add a segment there. Now let's go to the 3D view just to see what we have, yeah looks nice, and now let's just add the mullions, so let's go here to mullion and then use the regular kind of main type of mullions, go to all grid lines and just apply that, hit the escape key a few times, yeah looks perfect. Okay, now let's go back to level one, select this thing and then let's go to mirror, draw access and then let's just mirror it like this and finally use the move tool just to move it all the way here to the edge. Okay, looks perfect. Now we have our main 
unit, our module. The next step is going to be to group this thing. So just make a broad selection of everything. Yeah, I think this is the best option. And then let's just go here to create group. GP is the shortcut. And let's just call this one unit. Hit enter or click OK. And there we go. Now we have this as a group. Now one more really important step is to adjust this to disallow joins. So whenever you're copying this group, and in this case, we're going to copy this a lot of times, sometimes Revit might connect things that shouldn't be connected. Now we need to tell Revit, don't connect those. And we can do that just by going to level one floor plan, selecting that group, go into edit group. And then you select a wall, just like this, go to this little dr uh, drag and wall, the, the blue dot, right click and then click on disallow join. Do the same thing here, right click, disallow join, select this wall, right click and disallow join, and repeat the same thing here as well. Now we can make sure that Revit isn't going to accidentally attach this wall to another wall and mess the whole thing up. Now it's time to start using these modules to build our building. So let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go to the move tool. I'm going to select this here at the midpoint and then place it here at this quadrant of our circle that I have already placed. It's just a 9,000 millimeter radius circle. Okay, so now select your group go to the array tool, AR is the shortcut, make it a radial array. And then for the number, I'm just going to go with 10. So we're going to have 10 units in this first array. Then we also want to set the move to last, we want to place the center of rotation in the center of that circle. And for the angle, let's go with 90 and hit enter. And now an array has been created. The next step is going to be to Okay, that's fine. Uh, so the next step is going to be to go back to the 3D view. See, it looks like this now. It looks like a little train, choo choo. Ne never mind. So now let's go here and select the second one. So we have the first one, select the second one, and just change the reference level to number two, and then hit apply. Then go to the one after the third one and move it to level three. And then the next one we move to, yeah, you've guessed it, level four. And you just want to keep repeating this until you've basically moved all of them to their rightful layer. Now it's time to assign a proper rotation angle. So for that, let's go here to the project browser, find the site plan and open that up, zoom in a little bit. And now I want to rotate all of these to their proper rotation. So let's click on the rotate tool, RO is the shortcut, then you want to place the center of rotation here at the end point like that. And then you want to add the angle, I'm going to go with 22 degrees, make sure that the copy is not checked on, you don't want that hit enter, and it's going to rotate like that. Now I just want to select the second one, go to rotate, uh, place the angle of rotation here, and then add the 22 degree angle and just basically continue doing that for the rest of these. Again, I'm just going to speed this up. Uh, it is kind of repetitive. So it doesn't really make sense for me to show you each individual one. And now it's time for the best part. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, then I'm going to select all of these units. And then let's just remove this from the selection. Okay, so once we have all of them, I'm going to use the move tool in order to move this midpoint here to the quadrant. Let's see where it is. It's kind of hard to it can be a little bit hard to find. But okay, let's say it's here, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I can move it a little bit down. Yeah, I think something like this would do. Okay, so now I want to array this all the way around. However, I would first like to group it. So let's go and group this whole thing. And let's create a new group. And let's call this one a set. And then click OK. And now once we have this big group, now it's time to array it. So go again to the array tool, AR is the shortcut, this will be again a radial array number will be 14 to the last angle will be 360. And then to place center of rotation, uh, this one cool tip. So you want to hover over the edge, then type in SC, and it's going to snap to center. So that's a cool tip that you might want to know about. And then you can just click and there we go. And now we uh, once we have that in the center, I can just double check if everything here is in order. And it seems to be 
and just hit enter and Revit should be now creating the array. And there we go. So it looks like a mess obviously in the site plan. So let's uh, go to the modify tool to stop that. Okay, so it's a mess of elements, but there we go. We actually have that structure and it looks fairly good. It does have that tapered look. Obviously you can move it further to the outside to get a more tapered look, but I think for the workload included for creating this, I think this is an amazing result. What happens if I drop some shadows? It's probably going to be a mess for Rabbit, but yeah, I think this looks really, really cool. So there we go. That's how you can create this really cool tower quite simply and easily uh, in Rabbit. Obviously, it does take a little bit of time to get the math and the angles right, but it does look uh, really, really cool. If you want to get access to this Revit project file, you can find it along with all of my other Revit project files on my Patreon page, which I'm going to include a link to up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.